Hey what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my review of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare's multiplayer. If you just clicked on the video without reading the title, you probably wouldn't have guessed what this game is. You could have very easily mistaken this game for Titanfall with the exosuit boosting and futuristic weapons. Advanced Warfare takes place further in the future than any previous Call of Duty. It's still not as futuristic as Halo or Mass Effect, but it is much more futuristic than Black Ops 2 and Ghosts. In this game, I'm using the EM-1, the first time a laser has been a primary weapon in Call of Duty. For those who have already experienced the game, yes, I know the weapon is considered overpowered on PC, but I'm just using it to level up quickly, and I'm showing this gameplay just to demonstrate the stark contrast of Advanced Warfare's gameplay compared to previous Call of Duties. Regarding gamers, there is a wide spectrum of attitudes towards the Call of Duty franchise and its yearly release cycle. Some buy the new game every year without question, some like the series when it was younger but have burned out on its reputation, and some make it their sole purpose of being on the internet to hate on those who play Call of Duty. About the latter group, seriously, what's up with that? It's not cool to put someone down just because they have different gaming preferences. Nonetheless, Call of Duty was the most influential shooter series of the last generation of video games, and games of this generation have given little avail to displacing it as the industry leader. And frankly, there doesn't appear to be very much anyone can do to displace Call of Duty from the top of the charts. It appeals to a wide demographic range because it gives gamers easy access to what they want. Fast-paced, over-the-top action where you can get a lot accomplished when you don't have a lot of time. You can't beat Call of Duty at its own game, even though some have tried <coughs> Titanfall. You simply don't out Call of Duty, Call of Duty. Like it or not, the Call of Duty multiplayer formula is a winner, but is this game one that you will personally enjoy playing? This video will try to answer these questions. I will only focus on the multiplayer because that's the only mode that I've played. Also, even though I play exclusively on PC, I do follow the console metagame, so my review is applicable to the console versions of Advanced Warfare as well. Deviating from the previous development cycle of Infinity Ward and Treyarch releasing Call of Duty games in alternating years, Sledgehammer Games stepped in and offered Advanced Warfare in place of Treyarch's probable Black Ops 3. The game engine doesn't use the Infinity Ward engine which was used from Call of Duty 1. Yes, the World War 1 game released in 2003 has been seen in Call of Duty 4, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, and you get the point. Sledgehammer built a custom engine for Advanced Warfare. The game really attempts to modernize the graphics which had looked obsolete for the past few games. Call of Duty won't be in the conversation for the best graphics of the year, but it is taking steps to get there. The lighting is more realistic, but the lens flare can be distracting sometimes. Thankfully, you can turn off lens flare. The textures have a higher resolution and the models are more detailed, noticeably on the guns. Before, the side of a gun would just be one solid texture. Now, features like the safety selector or bolt catch have their own dedicated polygons. The PC version of the game does have a lot of performance issues. There is no SLI support, and to run the game on maximum settings, you need to have an above average video card, even though the game graphically looks like it could be maxed out on a budget build PC. The game has frame dips and stutters frequently. On both console and PC, there are no dedicated servers. Unfortunately, it is possible that your connection and others' connection can determine how well you do in the game. This is inexcusable and unacceptable for a franchise like Call of Duty. Servers are what the community have been asking for for years. Even Gears of War managed to get servers. There are probably more people in the least popular Call of Duty playlist than all the players in Gears of War combined. COD developers have always operated on a principle of maximizing rewards with least effort expended. Activision doesn't care about PC sales, but it dug its own grave in this regard. PC gamers won't take Call of Duty seriously and the population will remain low until the publisher fesses up the funds for the servers. It owes it to the player base that has dealt with these connection problems for years. Now let's shift the review to the gameplay. The most gameplay impacting addition to Advanced Warfare is your exosuit. Each player wears a robotic exoskeleton that allows them temporary boosts and higher jumps. You're able to get places and take shortcuts you wouldn't have been able to in previous Call of Duties. The exosuit boosts can be used to escape a sticky situation and win you some gunfights. 
you do have to plan when you use your exo boost because you will show up on the minimap every time you boost. Your exo suit can also give you a temporary power boost such as increased movement speed, silent footsteps, cloaking, or even a bulletproof barrier. If you don't want to play with the new exosuit abilities, there is a playlist where exosuits are disabled. As is standard for modern shooting games, there are a lot of weapons to choose for your loadout. You do have your assault rifles, some machine guns, sniper rifles, and shotguns, but new to the game are laser weapons and rail guns. The laser I'm using in this gameplay is classified as a heavy weapon, and it's clear what the best strategy is for using it on PC. The railgun is a single shot sniper rifle and arguably the best in the game. There is also another sniper rifle that fires explosive projectiles. Adding to the strategy of choosing your loadout are weapon variants that you can obtain from supply drops. The weapon variants sometimes trade a free attachment for decreased accuracy or sacrifices mobility for increased range, just to give you some examples of what weapon variants do. There are also a lot of choices for weapon attachments and my favorite new attachment is the parabolic microphone, which shows when enemies are shooting suppressed weapons. There aren't many attachments that are completely useless, and there aren't any that are too powerful, creating a very stable weapon balance metagame. Regarding weapon attachments and soldier perks, I once thought that there could never be too many, because customization is one of the strongest features of COD. COD Ghosts proved me wrong though, because there were too many soldier perks that simply weren't worthwhile to use. Advanced Warfare limited the number of perks, and most of them are beneficial in their own way. One of my most used perks is Blast Progression, which allows you to perform exosuit boosts without showing up on the minimap. I also use Scavenger a lot because there is a new gameplay mechanic where you can double tap R or X on the consoles, or at least Xbox on the PlayStation, it's the square button I think. You can double tap to perform a fast reload, but you lose the ammo in your magazine. By using Scavenger, you don't have to worry about ammo, so you get free fast reloads. There are so many effective combinations of weapons and score streaks that you are guaranteed to find one to complement your preferred playing style. Advanced Warfare score streaks have been pretty fair so far. UAVs are back because no one liked Ghost's SACOM system. System hacks, where you make your opponent's HUD and exosuit turn off, were too annoying and way too common early on, but the developers have increased the amount of score you need to earn a system hack, so now they aren't as annoying. One of the more exciting score streaks is the Goliath, where you receive a heavy mech from orbit, similar to the one you get in Titanfall. One major downfall is the absence of specialists and support streaks. With specialist streaks that were featured in Modern Warfare and Ghost, you get additional perks with additional score, and support streaks would not reset with each death. I hope these score streaks return in future CODs. For map design, Advanced Warfare takes into account the new exosuit abilities. Adding exosuit abilities to Black Ops 2 or Modern Warfare 3 wouldn't make the games play any differently because the maps weren't designed to take advantage of exosuit boosting. Advanced Warfare's maps are larger and give multiple elevation levels, so much so that an average sized Advanced Warfare map will be considered a large map in previous Call of Duties. The maps have so many flank routes that it makes it difficult for opposing teams to use spawn trapping as a tactic. Camping in general becomes a less viable tactic. Throughout the beginning of Call of Duty, the undisputed best strategy was the COD Patrol, where you would find a good vantage point that only had a few lanes to watch and just hold it down. You weren't camping by the strictest definition because you were always moving, but you would move a maximum range of 25 yards the entire game. Due to the map size and abundance of flank routes, Advanced Warfare is the most action-based Call of Duty yet, where you are disadvantaged for staying in the same place for too long. For objective game modes, the maps strike an even balance between the two teams. The middle objective is always highly contested and action-heavy. Another feature of Advanced Warfare's maps is that some of them have changing geometry. On Biolab, in the middle of the round, Domination Objective B changes from the middle of an open platform to a structure that gets airlifted in. One map opens a section only after a volcano erupts. One map gets flooded by a tidal wave in the middle of the round. There are a few new modes like Uplink, which is basically one flag capture the flag, and Momentum, which is a domination variant with capture points that advance towards the opposing side once you capture the point. Addictive metagames keep players logged into Advanced Warfare. There are a lot of character and weapon customization skins to unlock, though not as addicting as the Black Ops 1 COD points, supply drops are random inventory boosters from where you'll get most of your new gear. 
mentioned briefly earlier in the video, you can get random weapon variants from supply drops. You can also complete in-game challenges for weapon variants. Call of Duty is trying to be a bigger presence in esports, and Advanced Warfare gives competitive gamers a solid battleground. I do wish that the one-on-one -on -one gunfights were more challenging to win. The weapons have little recoil and require few shots to kill. The quick kill times contribute to the addictiveness of the game, but really allow individual luck to determine gunfight outcomes. One really lucky sequence of events could allow a mediocre player to turn the match around. With each new game, COD has tried to increase the amount of teamwork needed to win and tried to minimize the amount of randomness that could determine outcomes. I would like to see increased weapon recoil or an increase in the average shots to kill to make for intense encounters and require more teamwork to win matches and increase the skill gap. Advanced Warfare innovates where a lot of games can only imitate. I would say that the level of serious improvement is on the same level of Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 2, but still not on the level of Call of Duty 4. Not everyone will enjoy Advanced Warfare, but the game still remains true to its foundation as an over-the-top, fast-paced Twitch shooter while introducing new mechanics that create new ways to play. I give Call of Duty Advanced Warfare a review score of A-. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way through. Leave a like rating if I was informative. My name is David and I will see you next video.